All right, this week on What's the Story, we're here with uh, Steve McDonald of the McDonald Brothers, which is Red Cross. And I'm really bummed out that I don't have my Annette's Got the Hits album. Uh. But uh, if, even though I don't, I'm still glad to meet this guy because he's, like, awesome. Anyway, so first question I just want to ask you, um, how and why did you guys do the Spirit of 76 movie? Uh, how, it, how and why we did Spirit of 76. Um, I, I have I have it on tape because I love Devo. Uh huh. But, but. Well, okay. Well, the thing about okay, Spirit of '76 actually that is kind of a Northern California uh, experience. We lived in Alameda for two months while we did it. So if if you know this movie, you might recognize. So and you know Alameda, you might recognize some of the sites, which is kind of cool. How we did it was um, the producer Roman Coppola, son of Francis. Um, saw a Red Cross play at a show and then came up with the idea for the movie after seeing our show, which I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> and then uh, he hired uh, our commission, Lucas Reiner, who later directed the film, to write this idea down in script form. So when they made the movie, he insisted on casting Jeff and myself in the uh, roles as the uh, bumbling teenage uh, time travelers, uh, you know. Gee, where have I heard that plot line before? Anyways, so, uh, so uh, yeah, so we did that, and they, they, you know, asked us to do it, and we were flattered, and we were, you know, mostly accustomed to doing rock and roll, so it was exciting for us to be in a movie. So, uh, did you guys actually get to meet Devo, or, or had you met him before? Um, no, we, I had never met Devo before, and we did get to meet Devo. That's cool. Yeah. Was that, like, a big thing for you to even like them? No, I worship Devo, and so that was very exciting. Now I love this guy even more, because he worships Devo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I had, I had the first album when I was in seventh grade, and um, I even knew the Jocko Homo single before it, before the first album came out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And also, as a young punk rocker, that was, that's something that used to always happen with, um, when you were into punk rock, like in 1979 or something, and like surfer guys would see you and they didn't understand what you were about and they hated you, they'd yell Devo at you. Yeah. They Devo! And then later, a couple years later, they put out Whip It and then all the surfer guys like Devo too. But anytime I see like a kid walking around with a mohawk just to totally confuse him and he doesn't understand exactly and anything, he doesn't really understand what I'm talking about at all. If I drive past a kid with a mohawk, I always roll down the window and yell, Hey Devo! That's cool. Yeah, that's my Devo story. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, you guys put out your first record when you guys were 13. Is that right? Or 14? Well, our first EP came out when I was 12 and Jeff was 15, my brother. And and then our first proper album called Born Innocent, I was 14. Okay. And and that's got the hits? Is that... And that's the, the hits is actually our first EP. But it, it was reissued a couple different times. But yeah, that recording session was when I was 12. I, that's what I have, one of the reissues. Right, right. And it's... Um, I don't know if I oh God I doubt you'd remember this, but I saw you guys open it up for that band. In what city? Here. In San no, 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 in, in Oakland. Stone Temple Pilots. Stone Temple Pilots. Okay, and you guys were the first band, and every time that it got quiet, I yelled out, and that's got the hits and other songs from that from every that EP. Every time SPP got quiet. No, every time, every time you guys got quiet, and I yelled out, um, um, oh shit, what did it? Darn it! What are those other songs? Oh, um, yeah. That's uh, um, uh, got the hits. Uh, it's what else is on that record? Standing in front of poser. Uh, no. I hate my school. No. Uh, but I feel embarrassed because I should. Yeah. That's another <laughs> party. Okay, that's another. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, so I was I kept on yelling out these different names. You guys like wouldn't even look at me. You're like. Oh really? <laughs> no, I doubt you even heard me. But yeah. I just thought. I mean, pretty big auditorium. Yeah, it was. It was. But, um, geez, I don't know what else to ask well, you. You know, about. on the tour, we actually did do um, Annette's Got the Hits once in a while. Really? But we, I think on the tour, we've done different versions of that song. This, this is a song that I wrote when I was 11 years old. I wrote the bass part, at least, which is the main riff. And then my brother wrote the lyrics, and it says, like, we're paying homage to Annette Finicello. And, um, and we later did a version of it which got more progressive and ended up being like 12 minutes long. Really? So you're probably lucky we didn't play it that <laughs> night because it's kind of... I probably wouldn't have recognized it and I would have thought, man, this song sucks! Well, no, you would have recognized the first minute of it because that's how long the original version is. It's yeah. a minute long, but then it, we turned it into like some sort of Jefferson Airplane Space Jam freak out. Okay. And so um, your album for uh, Face Shifter, 
Is, is am I saying it right? Phase Shifter. Yeah, that was our last album. That um that album got some serious airplay and like. And the Bay Area did get some attention. I mean, that's how I heard of you guys from that album. You guys played uh, the 1993 uh, Live 105 Listener Appreciation Party here. Oh, right. And I saw you guys, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. But then the girl that you had touring with you th at that time, right. is she's not with you guys anymore, no, is she? Or? Jerry Finale, um, she's a pianist from the Bay Area, actually. She's from San Bruno. Okay. And uh, she, um, she actually recorded on our new album. We have a new album called... Um, with our new album it's called Show World and she played on the album but she opted to not tour with us so she's kind of just like an honorary member now she's really busy in Los Angeles doing session work and um, so, so, so all sorts of different gigs and she's doing some soundtrack work she's really really talented but she's from the Bay Area yeah anyway when I saw you guys play at the Listen Appreciation Party they were only giving bands like 15 minute sets 20 minute sets and you guys left the stage and let her play and I felt so cheated. I mean, it's cool. I know, I know you're probably thinking, man, this guy's a jerk. Well, but what do, you, what do you mean we let her play? We like, um, we didn't finish our set. Well, no, no, no. Um, you said there was only one girl, two girls on the whole bill of the whole night, oh. and so you left and just let her play the last song. And I was like, no, come on, come on, play. Wait, I was just sure I'm thinking, is this like the the radio uh, yeah. Christmas thing? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, she's also from the area, so we thought it was like her hometown gig. We sort of gave the show to her. That's cool. Yeah, you know. Besides, those acoustic things are always so, kind of a drag, I think, and, yeah, I don't know. I don't, that, was, that was a good lineup that year, but uh, I don't know. Anyway. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Powers. Yeah, Porter's Powers, They Might Be Giants, Wonder the, Stuff, actually the, the, uh, the, Cracker. The, sh the guy who brought down the house was Tony Bennett. That, I remember the Teenage Fan Club had to, had to play after Tony Bennett, and they were... They were screwed. Yeah, that was, Tony Bennett was so fun because everybody was like, yeah. My buddy tried to crowd ride, but nobody was like up oh, at the front of the stage. He was, he was like, I have to crowd ride during Tony Bennett. Uh, anyway. But, um, but okay, so the reason I have you here is so that you can intro one of your old videos. Okay. So do you want to – it's either one of the two that we already talked about. So go ahead and, and do your best intro. Okay. Um, well, um <laughs> Well, do you have a preference to which video you'd like to see? Either one. Either, Either one. one. Okay, well, I guess we'll show um, a video that we um, did a couple years ago for a song that's on our um, 1993 release, Phase Shifter. And the song is called um, Lady in the Front Row, and it was filmed entirely at the Hollywood Wax Museum. So there you go. Cool. Steve McDonald. Red Cross, freak out. <sighs>